So in previous lecture, we discussed the mathematics behind the brief descriptor. Furthermore, we also discussed the graphical interpretation of the brief, of, of the brief descriptor as to what the test function does. Uh, so in this lecture, we will now focus on the pseudocode uh, of, the, uh, of, of the brief algorithm which you can implement and it is also going to be the part of your assignment. So the input to the uh, descriptor is going to be an image, perhaps an RGB or a grayscale image. A set of feature points denoted by Ri, where i is from 1 to k, that is we have k feature points in an image where each of the Ri is a vector of integers, it is a coordinate of the feature point. Uh, in case of corners, uh, Ri is a coordinate of the corners in images and in case of blobs, Ri is the center of the blobs detected in the image. So we have k such feature points to be described by the brief descriptor. So we have k feature points denoted by lambda i, i goes from 1 to k. Another input to the algorithm is going to be the set Q, which contains n pair of coordinates x i and y i. And in previous lecture, we discussed the sampling methods that we uh, use to sample the set Q. And we saw that the method number two, where uh, both x i and y i were sampled as i i d Gaussian with mean 0 and variance s square over 25 where s is the size of the image patch s is equal to the dimension of lambda where we are assuming that each of the uh, feature points is described by the same size patch that is the size of patch is s cross s So now let's write the pseudocode of the descriptor. So the input to the descriptor is n, the number of bits to describe each of the lambda i, i goes from 1 to k. Second input is going to be uh, the feature points Ri, where i goes from 1 to k. Another input to the algorithm is going to be the set Q. So recall our discussion earlier that the set Q is pre-computed. So the set Q is stores xi we just use a different notation j xj yj where j goes from 1 to n so we have the number of bits to describe each of the uh, image patch around the uh, around the features so the patches are denoted by lambda i i goes from 1 to k so we have k such feature points we have the coordinates of each of the feature points where in case of corners, Ri is a coordinate of the corner and in case of blobs, Ri is a center of the blob. So we have k such feature points. We have the set Q which contains our pre-computed relative uh, pair of coordinates uh, which are to be tested in each of the image patches to describe those patches via the brief descriptor. Furthermore, uh, we have input image i as an input to this algorithm. So, the first step in the algorithm is to convert uh, the RGB image to grayscale. So, if the image is already grayscale, then we can skip this step. But if in case it is an RGB image, then we convert it to a grayscale image. The second step, as we discussed earlier, is going to be the smoothing step. 
and recall our earlier lecture we discussed that we can use any of the smoothing methods uh, that we have studied in this course uh, but the original brief paper uh, mentioned Gaussian smoothing. So we apply the Gaussian blur to this grayscale image. The next step is to compute uh, the descriptor for each of the k feature points in an image. So for i equal to 1 to k, we compute the descriptor for the kth feature point f we can write it as r i or lambda i. So to be consistent uh, with the uh, with our notation so far, we'll use lambda i parameterized by the set q is given by sum over all j equal to zero to n minus one. 2 raised to the power j tau of lambda i parameterized by the pair x j y j. So we can compute this feature vector, the integer, the corresponding integer value and we can decode it as an n dimensional uh, bit string. So we convert this number into an n dimensional bit string. Or an n dimensional binary vector. Or instead of computing this integer number, we can directly compute uh, the n dimensional binary vector. So we can describe this feature vector as phi and each of the components of this n dimensional, uh, small n dimensional feature vector phi j is going to be tau of lambda i parameterized by x j y j for j equal to 0 to n minus 1 and where the pair x j y j belongs to set q. So this uh, completes the pseudocode for describing the feature points in an image. Now, uh, let's suppose uh, once we have computed, let's suppose there are two different images, image number one and image number two, and let's suppose there are two feature points in each of the images, and the task is to identify which feature point matches with which of the feature points in the other image. So, we can simply assign the match as the one which has the minimum distance for the descriptors. So we can compute, so let's call it point P1, P2, uh, P11, P12, let's call it P21 and P22. So we can compute the distance of P11 and P12, we can compute P11, P22. Similarly, there are two more distances, P21, sorry, P12 and P21, D of P12 and P22. So since our descriptors are binary vectors, or we can convert them into bit string, we compute the Hamming distance. To match the descriptors. So we'll compute the Hamming distance for the descriptor. Let's suppose with P11 we, did, we denote the descriptor for this point and with P12 we, the, we denote the descriptor uh, for the feature point P12. Then we'll compute the Hamming distance uh, 
of P11 and P12 and so on we compute the four different Hamming distances. So, we will associate one of these points to P11 and we will associate one of these points to P12 depending on for which point the distance uh, of these points is minimum where the distance here is a Hamming distance where in case you have forgotten uh, the Hamming distance between two different binary vectors can be computed as so let's suppose we have two different binary vectors or bit strings so a bit string a uh, let's suppose 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 and we have another bit string 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 so we have 10 dimensional bit strings a and b so the Hamming distance is given by first taking the ZOR. So we perform the ZOR operation which gives us 0, 1. So for this 0, for this 1, for this 1, we have 0, we have 0, we have 0, again 0, we have another 0, we have another 0 and we have another 0. So, the resulting bit string has two ones and thus the distance, the Hamming distance of A and B is equal to 2. So, in modern computers as it is noted and mentioned in the original brief paper as well that computing this distance between the two different brief descriptors is very fast and we can exploit uh, the SSE instruction sets of the modern CPUs and in the original paper they used SSE 4.1 instruction sets to implement the distance computation between the binary uh, brief uh, descriptors of the image patches. Uh, so as you can see uh, the computation as well as the matching of descriptor is computationally very efficient. computationally efficient uh, compared to the more uh, complex uh, descriptors of uh, the uh, surf and the sift uh, algorithms. Furthermore, in the paper as a side note, it was mentioned uh, that the brief descriptor performed competitively uh, when compared against the descriptor used by the surf and usurf algorithms. Uh, and for these comparisons, we assume that the rotation um, of the feature points is minimal or they, there was no rotation at all. Uh, furthermore, as a side note, it was also mentioned that uh, the brief descriptor performed best with censure key points. So, censure is another interest point vector. You can read it on your own if you are interested in to knowing what it is. So, it was mentioned that the brief descriptor performed well. Uh, when it was combined with the censure key points as opposed to when, com when combined with the surf key points when comparing it against the surf results. So, this completes our discussion of the naive brief descriptor which does not take the rotation of key points into account. It is easy to incorporate the rotation of the, of, of, of the key points into account via brief descriptor which is a different discussion. So, this is the naive brief descriptor pseudocode. And implementing this is also going to be the part of your assignment.